Hello teachers, it's James. You're looking at my lesson plan for April 2020. I am going to go over my lesson plan, then show you the materials. This lesson plan was done on Microsoft PowerPoint. At the top I have goals, expressions, prepositions, or positions, in, on, next to, under, behind. Do you understand English? Yes, a little. Not at all. Yes, very well. Phonics blended letters. F L S N C R Q U S L T R S H S P T H C H D R S W F R S T G L C L B R G R B L. Games Old Maid Sushi Go War Connect Four. In lesson one, we have a warm up. I ask, what's your name? What's your family name? How do you spell your name? How old are you? What grade are you in? What elementary school do you go to? Where do you live? Where are you from? Then I ask, the days of the week, months of the year, the seasons, and the weather. In lesson one under expressions, I have two sets of expressions. The first set is for older kids and the second set is for younger kids. I'll be showing them to you a bit later. In the next column, under Do You Understand, for this month I have a theme question, this very basic question. Do you understand English? The word understand is Dikaisuru in Japanese. So the whole question, Do you understand English in Japanese is Anatowa, Ego ga wakarimasu ka? I have presented three ways of answering this question rather than saying yes I do or no I don't. Again, I'll show these cards later. Under that, I have where is the ball? At first, I use flashcards to present the positions. Then after, I use a box and a ball. Under action words, I get my students to pantomime these verb actions. Fix, break, hang, listen, smell, climb, pet, help, make, look, read, scratch, and write. I will show these cards to you later. In the next column, I have phonics. Blended sounds. Students try to pronounce and figure out a word that uses the blended sounds. Again, I'll show these to you later. Under homework, I hand out a sheet that has the question, Do you understand English? With an answer, yes, a little, not at all, or very well. They have to memorize each of these answers. For lessons two and three, you're going to repeat the material. For lesson four, warm up, do the same. In lesson four, at the end of the month, I test my students. Alrighty, let's get to the material. I'm now in my classroom. I'll show you the materials. I have the days of the week, the months of the year, the four seasons, and the weather. If you watch my other videos, you'll see how I use these cards and the kinds of questions I ask. Anyway, these are the expression cards in my lesson plan. I'll come up closer. I have, come on, that is Hayoku. Just a minute, that is Chotamate. Look at this, that is Kore o Mite. Good for you. Yogata desu ne. Where are you? Anato wa doko desu ka? I'm here. Watashi wa koko ni imasu. Whose ball is this? Kore wa dare no ball desu ka? It's mine. Watashi no mono desu. Dinner's ready. Banko han deki da yo. I'm coming! Ima iku. One card that I like to point out is whose ball is this? My students know the word who, but they don't necessarily know this word whose. To say whose in Japanese is dare no. So I usually ask my students, what does whose mean? They'll say dare no. It means dare no. Whose ball? Dare no ball. Kore wa dare no ball desu ka? You have to enunciate the word whose 
and perhaps demonstrate it with a gesture. Okay? The next set is I don't know. What kind of I? That's too bad. Zannen nagara, kuyashi. Really? Honto ni? Homa? Why? Naze? Doshite? Let me see. Etone. So I would tell my students this is a thinking expression. Let me see imi wa kangaichu. Etone mitai. That's the way I would explain this. All right? So I would go over these cards with my students, and then I would do this week after week, and then eventually I would hide the words and get them to identify the expression. It's up to you how you want to do it. You can play karuta. It's a slap game. So you slap the card, you lay all the cards on the floor or the table, and you call out a word or an expression, and they, they race for it. All right, that's called karuta or karuta, but they say karuta. All right, next I have, do you understand English on my lesson plan? For this one, I have three cards. I'm going to bring these cards up close. I have, do you understand English? A little, that is chotodake. And you can exaggerate this boy saying, how are you? I, I, I am. <laughs> He's panicking. <laughs> do you understand English? Not at all. And this is the Japanese gesture for no, I can't do it. Okay, so learn this expression. Not at all. And do you understand English? Very well. How are you? I'm glad to meet you. I'm Hiroshi. All right. So of course, I would have the question, do you understand English on the whiteboard? Most of my older students know the word understand, which is bikaisuru in Japanese. So they understand that word. So do you understand English? Another wa ego ga wakarimasu ka? And I would present these cards. And I, and I would go over these cards at the end of the month. I'll ask them, do you understand English without presenting these cards? They have to give me a quick response rather than saying yes or no. They have to say a little or not at all or very well. That's what I expect and that is their homework. So I hand out homework with the question, do you understand English? And for each week, they'll have a different answer. It's up to you how you want to do this. Okay, the next thing I'll do is prepositions, positions. Some students know the word position, but they say position in Katakana English because some of them play sports like soccer or baseball. So you will need flashcards. Yeah, I'll come up close. I have, where's the ball? The ball is in the box. Or they can just say, in the box. Where is the ball? The ball is on the box or on the box. Where is the ball? The ball is under the box. Under the box. Where is the ball? The ball is next to the box. Next to the box. Where is the ball? The ball is behind the box, behind the box. Make sure your students understand these words. If they don't, you might have to use some Japanese. It's up to you how you teach, but I use some Japanese in my lessons. Okay, I'm pretty flexible. So, and the next thing, I have a box with a ball in it. I would, so I would say, where is the ball? Where's the ball? And of course that would be written on the board. I could say the ball is on the box. If they say on, that's okay. But I want them to say it's on the box or on the box. 
Okay, where is the ball? Next to the box. Next to, okay? That is tonari. All right, where is the ball? Un, un, under, yes, under the box. Where is the ball? In the box. Yes, the ball is in the box. Where is the ball? Behind the box. Yes, behind the box. Then I would give a student the ball in the box. Then I would call the position of the ball. Where's the ball? Show me. The ball is in the box and that student should understand where to put the ball. If they don't, you can show them the card again. But for their test at the end of the month, no way. They have to know these words. That's part of the lesson. In, on, next to, under, and behind. If you want to expand on that, you can do above or below or between two boxes. Okay, next thing. The next thing is phonics. These are blended sounds. Okay, I'll bring these up. I have fl and emphasize it like this. Fl okay, the L. The tongue goes up. L fl flower. And I want my students to think of another word that produces fl. Some students are smart. They know fly, okay, or flag. They've learned that word here. Okay. Cl clown. You should emphasize the letters. Sw. Sw. Swing. Ch. Ch. The tongue goes down. Ch. Tree. Train, triangle, okay, snake, snack, snow, okay, cur, the tongue stays down, cur, crayon, crab, cry, okay, next one is ku. Queen, quiz, quiet. K. Okay, next one is sp, sp, spoon, spider, spring. Sh, sh, shell, shoes. Sl the tongue goes up. Sl sled. Slide. Ch. Ch. Chair. Chair. Chicken. Cheese. Chocolate. Ch. Okay, next one is. Gl the tongue goes up. Gl glass. Glove. Next one. Jr. Jr. Drum. Drink. Okay. Fr. Get them to bite the bottom of their lip. Fr and the tongue goes down. Fr, fr, frog, Friday, fry pan, st, st, star, study, student, stop. Bl, bl, get them to put their tongue up. Bl, block, black. 
Next is grrrr. Okay, get them to put their tongue down. Grrrr. Grapes. Great. Grrrr. Grrrr. Their tongue goes down. Brr. Broom. Brush. Brown. TH. This is. Their tongue should be at the top of their teeth. Thumb. Thumb. This. That. Thumb. Okay? That is Oyayubi. Fl. Fl. Their tongue goes up. Fl. Flower. Fly. Okay? That's how I teach it. It's up to you how you want to do it. If you feel grossed out about doing that, then don't do it. It's your loss. And next thing is action words. I get my students to pantomime these words. Allow me to take them out. I'll bring them up. I have break, climb, listen, scratch, fix, write, look, pet, smell, help, make, hang, and read. In the beginning, students won't know these words, but, but over time, they will. The only way to really know if they understand it is by testing them. This is not an international school. This is an A Kaiwa. So students come here once a week and they learn about 50 minutes of English. There's only so much they can absorb. So I would have to explain what these words mean in Japanese. So the break, doing the gesture, okay, it means kuareru in Japanese. So I would have to know how to say these words in Japanese. It's up to you how you want to teach this. This is the way I do it. I know these words in Japanese and I translate it for them. The only way to know if they understand this is by asking them, what's break? They can guess, they can see all kinds of words. But in my case, I know the meaning of each of these words in Japanese. Okay, but they can't say suika, which means watermelon. They have to say kowareru, which means break. Okay, uh, what's climb? Some kids might say noboru. Very good, that is climb. You don't have to say the Japanese word, but it reinforces the meaning. So if they say noboru, you say, yes, that is climb. Okay, this is climb. You don't necessarily have to say the word noboru. You can gesture it, they'll understand it. It's to your benefit to know some Japanese when you're teaching a kaiwa. Okay, that's for that. And I have some games, I have a pack of cards. I have taught my students how to play War. That's a very easy game. If you want to know how to play, you can just search it up or you can ask me or I might do a video on that. It's really easy. No thinking at all, okay? And, we, and I have Connect Four. So if you have a group of four kids in a class, you can put them in pairs. There's a red team and yellow team. And there's one more game, I'll be right back. And there's one more game. It's called Sushi Go. And this is a lot of fun. So if you want to know how to play this, search it up or you can ask me and I might make a video on how to play this game. And that's how to do this lesson. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and good luck. Bye everyone.